Hey guys, today we're going to talk about an interesting subject. It's a bit deeper into the tech of things and my board designs and such, but it's about what I'll call the myth of the data LED resistor. Let's dive into it. Starting out, I want to mention that I've also written an article about this exact same subject. So if you want to calmly read through that after watching this video, it will be linked in the video description. Okay, so if you've ever looked into doing addressable LEDs with using WS2812B or any other similar addressable LED and using either a bare Arduino or ESP board, and for this, I'm getting there, looked at guides from Adafruit, WLED, or whomever else out there. There's lots of guides out there now. They always recommend adding a little resistor in the path of the LED data line going to the first LED. So instead of going directly from the pin of your microcontroller to the LED strip, there is a little resistor in between there. Why is that? Now, We'll get to the why later. And while most of the guides and people on the internet, the internet, agree that that resistor is needed there, what the internet can seem to agree on is the value that resistor needs to be. Some say you need a 450 ohm resistor. Others say, no, no, you need a 33 ohm resistor. And then other say, sources will tell you, no, you need 100 ohms or 200 ohms or even that it doesn't really matter as long as there's one there. Okay. Generally, there is somewhat of a consensus on what it does, and that is that it prevents signal ringing or reflections on the data lines, especially on longer cables and stuff like that. But in truth, it's actually more important than most people realize. Now, a lot of people watching this will be wondering, what do you use on your boards? I mean, you have this uh, Dig Uno and Dig Quad. What's on there? Well, to be honest, this has evolved over the years. I started with no resistors, then I changed it to 51 ohm resistors, and on the last revisions of the boards, I've settled on 249R, or 249 ohm resistors. But let's get to the point. Why? Now, Although this is a technical video, I'm going to explain it mostly using two examples because in the end, for generic LED installs, there are gener generally, that's a lot of general, two scenarios I'd like to highlight for choosing the resistor value to use. The rest is tuning for a very specific scenario, like for instance, using UTP cable or Ethernet cabling or something like that, and we're not going to go into that today. The two scenarios I'd like to highlight are when using 10 meters or 32 feet of wire to connect your LEDs, but either with a cable that has ground running next to the data wire or not. So either you're running a two wire cable for positive and negative power and a single data wire to go along with that, or you're running a two or three wire cable where ground is present next to the data signal for the whole distance. And yes, we're specifically talking about in the same cable. So with a constant distance the whole way there, running a ground cable vaguely next to it generally doesn't have the same influence as it being the exact distance in the same cable all the way there. My boards, so the Queen LED Dig Uno and the Queen LED Dig Quad have been mostly optimized for the first scenario. So having power wires and a separate data wire to go along with that. I've written an article where I go through my testing process and in the end conclusion was that with my current boards with the 249 ohm resistor on there, a 10 meter data line will work in most situations, but I've even tested up to 20 meters. Again, this is using those 249 resistors currently present on all my pre-assembled boards and a separate data line wire for the data line for the LEDs. Looking at this using an oscilloscope, we see that the data signal at the board terminals on the left, I always have to see which one it is, 
uh, and then uh, after 10 meters of cable on the right. The signal survives this perfectly fine, and your LEDs will run great, as you can see from the scope graphs. As a side note, I don't really see the use in testing much longer lengths of data wire. This type of signal is called a single-ended signal, and it really isn't suited to be transferred for very long lengths. Even the 10 meter or 32 feet, let alone 20 meters or 64 feet, is already very much stretching what is possible. If you want a data signal that will go longer, you need to look into differential signaling. And we're not going to go into that today. So let's get back to that 10 meter of power and separate data wire scenario. This is working perfectly with the 249R resistor. So all is good, you'd probably say. And yes, it is until we change something very simple. Now, instead of running a dedicated wire for the data signal, let's change it to a two wire or three wire with ground on the second wire or ground and positive voltage. Doesn't really matter for this case. Looking at the scope, we see this changes the data signal dramatically. Suddenly our neat block waveform are half rounded sloped up mountains and while well, the LEDs are showing clear signs of corruption and flickering and all kinds of bad stuff happening everywhere. You can't look at it. Disconnecting this ground wire again makes this immediately go away and everything works perfectly again. Now looking at that graph in layman's terms, the ground next to the data signal is basically nibbling on the data signal's energy, draining away some of it. Eventually over distance, this becomes too much and makes the data signal unusable for the LEDs. Okay. So ground next to your data signal bad, right? Well, yes, but it can be somewhat counteracted or fixed. It can even have some benefits in some situations, but we aren't going to go into that today either. Basically by choosing a different resistor value on that data line, the effect the ground being near to the data lines having can be somewhat counteracted. And this is really just changing a single resistor per channel on the board. So now we know what we need to change to basically adjust or condition the data signal for the type of wire you might be using in your setup. I do understand that not everyone wants to solder or replace a resistor on the boards. For this, I've made a little board I call the Quinn LED Data Booster. On this board, I've put a level shifter setup and it can take in anything from 5 volts to 48 volts. But this video isn't really about that board. I'll make a separate video and have articles about it, what else this little board can do for you. But one of the things that it can do is change the output resistor with a little switch on the board between 249 ohm, which my own boards also have, and 33 ohm. So let's add this little board to the setup and see what changes. Right, I've added the little board behind the Quinn LED de quad I was running to do these tests, and currently we're still set to 249 ohm. We're still in the situation where ground is running next to our data signal, and thus the LEDs are showing a corrupted data signal, and while you can clearly see in the scope, this isn't a neat uh, block waveform. Now I'll flip the switch on the board from 249 to 33, and well, here is the scope output after that 10 meters of wire. And poof, instant fix. Why? In short, and again in layman's terms, the much lower resistor value allows a lot more energy to be put into the data signal, especially at the beginning. At the terminals, this doesn't look great on the scope. I don't have a picture for that right now. But running it longer distance to the LEDs with ground next to the data wire, this works out perfectly. So this change kind of balances each other out, resulting in a good and usable data signal at the end of the wire. Okay, hey, problem fixed. But then you may ask, okay, but can't you just use a 33 ohm resistor then? Why do you use 249 ohm? The simple answer to that is no. A 33 ohm resistor is very optimized for running with ground there and the 249 ohm resistor is very optimized for running without ground there. And sure, I can pick a value in between, but 
basically that would always be a compromise and lower the lengths for both given scenarios and while well, do both mediocre. And then I'd rather optimize for one scenario, hence my 249R resistors, and then give you the option or a little board if you don't want to solder to change it to your situation with the 33 ohm resistors. And well, that's basically what this video is about. I know a lot of people out there are using the boards with their Christmas lighting setups, and those often use X-Connect cables, which inherently have data and ground together in the same cable. For those, as I mentioned, if you can solder, I'd recommend replacing the 249R resistors on my boards with a 0603 33R 1% resistor, and that will provide the same adjustment like the Quinn LED data booster would do for you. If you can't or don't want to solder, I'll be selling these little boards through the Worldwide Store and Dr. Z Store. They're actually available right now. And you can just add them to the channels where you are having an issue. Again, this issue doesn't always happen, only when you're using long cables. And that will resolve it for that uh, channel, basically. I'm trying to keep the price of the board down as much as I can, so you can maybe add some to your order to make sure you never get stuck whatever type of cable you end up using. Now, this will be it for this video, but as said, I also have a written article about this exact subject with nice graph uh, shots and stuff like that, so maybe check that out on my website. And I'll do another video about this board specifically in the future to highlight more of its specific features of the board itself, because this is just one of them, basically. And well, that was it for this topic today, but I feel it's an under-highlighted topic generally. Maybe after watching this, you'll go like, aha, uh -huh. so that might be why one of my runs wasn't working properly. At least I hope this knowledge will be more widely known after this video and article. I mean, up to two or three meters or 10 feet, it generally just works, even with the 249R resistors and three-wire cables and stuff like that. But now it's at least clear why and what difference the resistor can make for your setup if you want to run longer cables than that. So, as I said, maybe add one or two to your next order and have uh, these little data booster boards on hand if you do run into these issues. Let me know in the comments if you've ever run into a situation like this. I'd really love to know. And well, as always, thank you for watching, and I hope to see you back for the next video. Bye-bye.